this here um, will pull all the coverages back and then you can basically just catch a, you know, a really deep ball over the top. Exact same setup. You're gonna see how this guy gets outside of that release and you can see he's pretty much gone. Turn up field and get very easy one play touchdowns with that route. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. What? Then stop. Got it. Just stop and let them keep spinning, baby. I'm right spinners. I'm right spinners. They don't stop. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Man. She's always got another offense for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over a very glitchy offense in one of my favorite offensive playbooks, the Baltimore Ravens. You're going to need a mobile quarterback to run this efficiently, but based off the fact that you're running with the quarterback, you really get one of the best blocking advantages you can get out of any run play in the game. And I'm going to show you guys that today. But I'm not just going to show you the run plays. I'm going to show you guys the full offense. Run plays, passing plays. I'm going to give you guys an entire offense today. Now, the offense I'm going to show you guys today is out of the gun split twins. This formation might look familiar. I made a couple plays out of it last year. When it was called the Heisman. Last year, though, it was really weird. You had three Heisman uh, players in the backfield, where this year you actually get running backs next to the quarterback. So it's much more traditional formation. And it's got a lot more plays this year. I mean, last year it only had like two or three. This formation got a lot better. They had a lot more passing plays, a lot more run plays. And now you can really run it like a traditional offense. But the play that I'm making this video about, and the play to me that's probably the most overpowered in this formation, is the power read. I used this in my trick play video yesterday, and it was so good. I've been using it since. I was like, man, I got to make a video just dedicated to this. And I got to build an offense around it. So if you guys want to see more videos out of this offense or maybe a gameplay with this particular offense, because that's kind of what I'm plotting on doing, because I've been using it a lot. It's really fun. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the audibles. Now, like I said, the power read is the main play. You can see I average over 13 yards of carry with this run. But the three main plays that I'm going to use the most are going to be the power read, the shovel option, which I just mentioned. Like I said, I put something out from this similarly last year. And probably the halfback slip screen, the PAF slide. There's no real run play going in the opposite direction. All the run plays are kind of going to the right. So passing is pretty much the only option. That's why the PF slide is going to be important. So these are going to be the four plays. If I were to pick a fifth play, I like the post halfback corner. That's a really good play when it comes to man coverage especially. So we'll just pick that. Now, as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at AOAH.com. If you guys want to get your mutt team up and support this channel at the same time, all you have to do is check them out and you discount code money to get 3% off. It's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market. It's really about these two plays. The power read is an inside run, even though in the diet, Diagram, it looks like you can go outside with the running back. I'll show you what happens when you do that. It never really works out. To me, every time I run the power read, I am keeping it with the quarterback. That's the whole purpose of this play, is when you do that, you typically, um, you know, like a, see, he gets tackled pretty much every time. So it looks like a broken play. But the fact that the run gets shut down every single time actually is a huge benefit to this play because I'm gonna use that running back as my lead blocker, basically just let that running back get tackled by the first uh, guy that comes in free every single time. So let's go and let's let him, uh, you know, take himself out of the play. And you can see if I just let everything develop, I just have a huge hole. So I don't know if you guys noticed what happened there, but ultimately once this play developed and once I chose to keep it with the, uh, the quarterback, there is nothing down the field. There is nobody on this side of the field. And that's what makes this play so successful. Anytime you run a play with a running back, you typically only have nine blockers because you're running the ball with yourself and the quarterback's doing nothing. So it's really nine on 11. When you run it with your quarterback, now you have a lead blocker in your running back and basically everybody on your team is doing something on the play. So we're going to do that a couple of times. Like I said, there is a read for the shovel option and the half black slip screen and all these other plays. But with the power read, it just feels like you're running it's just about anything. I can't Psych. say that there's really a look or uh, you know anything that I, I mean it's just it's just such a good run play I mean you obviously the better the play is going to be based off how fast Lamar Jackson is I mean you just have to look at this blocking this blocking is incredible that's what makes this play so good number one the running back gets tackled he always gets tackled so the first guy that they let come in free always gets taken out of the play right away then you can see I mean I got a double team and I just got huge lanes all over the place 
I would say the best way to stop this play would probably be to blitz it heavy. Like right here, we have a double safety blitz. That brings me to my next play, which can either be the shovel option or the slip screen. I would say if somebody does blitz this play heavy, the slip screen makes the most sense because the slip screen typically, you know, screens are best used against blitzes, heavy blitzes. Although there, he did catch me. But ultimately, the slip screen is going to have the most success if somebody decides to blitz this formation. So if you see that your opponent starts sending a lot of blitzes, like this could be a blitz here too. The safe comes down to the box. Um, I could basically just hit him with, hit him with this slip screen. The only thing about it is it takes a little bit of time for it to develop and slip screens are always rough when it comes to blitzes because they can get knocked off and, and bumped out of their route. Now the thing about the slip screen is you also have a really good option on the right side which as long as it's not a man coverage this RB route will typically get open as long as it's not a man coverage or a uh, hard flat. A card, any hard flat will typically be on that table route as well. But that's a really good option. Now the second best run play though for sure is definitely the shovel option. This play here you really have two options. You're going to have your left bumper and your right bumper. You're running back on your left you'll hit the left bumper you're running back on the right you hit the right bumper it's really that simple or you can actually keep with the quarterback too although i don't typically find that's the way you don't quite get the pitch animations that i've gotten in some other plays like that's one of the few issues when it comes to this shovel option is a lot of times i'm expecting to be able to get that pitch animation and i haven't been getting it uh when it comes to this so you really have to get this ball out a lot sooner at you know where in some other plays you can actually wait till you're running your quarterback's getting tackled where in some other plays, you can actually wait for your quarterback to essentially get tackled before you end the pitch out. This is not one of those plays. So it would have been better if you could, but ultimately this is still a good play. Like I said, you just have to get that ball out quick and basically just sprint away from the uh, the defense as much as you can. But you can see even there, like I was, you know, that was not a good pitch. I got the bad pitch animation where essentially the running back like stops to catch it. And I don't know if it does this because... Yeah, I mean, he's just, this is not how you want him. You don't want him catching the ball in this posture, like he's down the field just catching a pass, like, like an actual receiver. You want him catching the ball in stride. So I got the bad animation, but I still am like five yards away from anybody and got nothing but space to the sideline. It's a really good play. I don't really think pitching it inside is a really good move. I think that's a good way to get a fumble, um, but it is an option if you see something. If you see a lot of space inside pre-snap, you might want to do that. But ultimately, to me, this play is all about getting outside and just, you know, using whoever your fastest running back is to get the ball up the field. As you can see, if you do it correctly, it's a very easy play. Now, one of the cool things about this play too is if you don't want to, you don't have to follow the pattern. You can basically break off and do whatever you want. Uh, if you feel like it's, you know, you can treat it like a blast or like a power run if you have big, you know, gaps in front of you. The fact that you can basically run this play inside uh, it probably makes it better than the uh, the inside option because I don't really have blocking there that I like. So like I said, if I want to, just go ahead and run this right up in the lane and then boom, there's nothing even out here. Uh, as you can see, I mean, this could be a really good play on its own, even without the pitch. Uh, and I like that. I like the fact that it doesn't have you on rails. It lets you do whatever you want. And based off the fact that I was saying you don't really have a good running option to the left, this might be the best one because you can go wherever you want. So if you see your opponent over shifting to the right side or something like that, you could always take this play and run it around to the left. So if you see your defense over shifted like this, where you have, you know, basically the entire defense, I said earlier, I might've spoke too soon. You don't really have a run play to the left. Well, I guess you do in the shovel option since you can pretty much do whatever you want and just basically use Lamar Jackson's speed uh, and get to the edge and have big plays. You need a good quarterback. You need a fast quarterback to run this offense. Now, when it comes to pass plays, typically all the pass plays are going to be the left side, which is going to be something that's going to catch your opponent off guard as well. The PAF slide uh, is a really good play. This here, you got two routes. One, I'm really only looking at two, I guess. I mean, there are some one-play touchdowns, but I'll probably just have that on my Patreon, my Join Now Community tab. Uh, but as far as the pass plays go, I mean, you really just were playing Andrews versus Dobbins. That's really my only look. You got a high-low route. They're pretty close to one another, and you pretty much just choose. Now there, I probably should have waited for the deeper route. The deeper route is probably the option. But we'll go and we'll do that again. So let's go ahead and let's run this. Like I said, I don't really look at too many other routes on this play. Like I said, this here, pretty much just going, you know, Andrews is going to be the read nine times out of 10. He beats man, he beats zone. That's pretty much why, where the running back only beats zone. So that's why I'm pretty much looking at Andrews the whole way. Uh, as you can do again right here, like I said, that oh, the rest of these guys really just pull back coverage. And he's pretty much always going to be the option. Although the running back was open too. That's the thing about this place. Pretty much both of these players are going to be open. Sometimes you're going to want to keep an eye on the other side, but ultimately I find that, you know, this is not my favorite play. It's something that you might have to do if your opponent starts catching on and trying to jump the routes going in the other direction. But ultimately, you know, I don't find that or Watkins are really great plays. 
uh, when it comes to how this play is set up here. That must have been a crazy man blitz because Andrews was wide open. You can sacrifice Andrews though and make a big play out of the B route. This is a really good route combo because ultimately this here um, will pull all the coverages back and then you can basically just catch a, you know, a really deep ball over the top. This is also a cover two one play touchdown. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. You're going to want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field, but all you really have to do is put the B route here on a streak and this X route here will be a very big play against cover two zone. So you can see right there, we got a one play touchdown the very first play. I didn't know I had Brown in that spot, but obviously that speed is going to help. Uh, this all works out based off the fact that that X route just basically, you know, it's designed to get outside of cover twos. Uh, so really just putting this guy on a streak is all I really need to do. So that guy's going to pull back the zone coverage. Uh, the A route here uh, really helps to pull that cornerback down. You can see there, I didn't get a touchdown, but it's still a very big play. You can run this from anywhere, maybe center hash, but you're going to you're gonna lose uh, some, some catch and run space. Like I, I can run it here if I don't have all that space and I could still have success, but a lot of times you'll you'll just get caught by the safety that much quicker. So if you want a one play touchdown, you definitely need space, but this is a good play to be run from anywhere on the field. If you do it without changing up that B route, it actually still has success. So, but you can see it's much tighter. The catch is almost contested on that play, but ultimately streaking this guy here is pretty much the way to go. And then, you know, they're actually through kind of early, but you can see I mean, we're getting big plays pretty much every single time, even when I don't necessarily run the play uh, as good as it can be run. That play can also have success against cover two man. So we'll go and pick that exact same setup. You're going to see how this guy gets outside of that release. And you can see it's pretty much gone. I mean, it's something that, you know, this route, cover twos are very similar. So this route here, um, it's really just something that should be just about any single cover two. Cover two man, cover two zone. Anybody's running those two defenses, you can dial this up and run it the exact same way. And you still have a really good check down in the A route. But obviously, why would I go for that when I can basically just, you know, turn up field and get very easy one play touchdowns with that route. Now, this play can also have a lot of success against cover four quarters. So once again, same route. Let's go and pick that. So I'm gonna run this from a hash once again so I can get a little more pass lead, but ultimately you can run this play the exact same way. Put this B route on a streak. You will see that the safety will not get pulled back this time. He'll get pulled forward with that streak. Uh, and that's all I really gotta do. This X route here will eventually get past this cornerback because he doesn't really get hands on him. It's almost like a man coverage, but they don't do anything to alter them. You don't chuck them. They don't, um, you know, press them at the line. I'm sure my speed advantage with uh, Hollywood Brown helps, but that's not really what's making this play happen. What's making this play happen is the fact that these uh, zone coverages, they just don't really cover like they're supposed to. Let's just put it that way. The zone, these, these are zone coverages that are like half between man and half between zone, which means that they're always have to be ready to switch off. And this route here, I don't know if they think they're gonna have to switch off, but they never really get over top of it there's a lot of routes where cover four quarters does but this is not one of them lobbing this pass by the way is also very important as you can see right there if i was bullet passing some of these i probably wouldn't uh, make this play so make sure that you know you just throw a good pass and you should be good against any cover two and cover four match this has a lot of success against pretty much any man coverage so we're going to pick that again we'll start off with cover one man this play here i mean pretty much you know the tight end is going to be there again the b route is going to be the call though this time as you can see if you have a fast enough receiver i could easily get a one play touchdown against man coverage but both the crossing receivers are really good and i feel like even the uh, the x route is a good option i'm gonna try to get a one play touchdown here though based on the fact that watkins might just not be fast enough as you can see right there to get past him but i mean this is pretty obvious we have a lot of man beating routes on this play and that includes the x route if you have a speed advantage at wide receiver this guy here will get gone. I don't know if I have enough arm strength to really out throw that cornerback, but you can see it drops into the bucket. You can basically be going with the exact same route. And obviously it'll work against man zero, but let's go ahead and let's do that one time. The only thing that's really gonna change here is I probably wanna pass block my running backs based off the fact that they don't really do anything on this play because they'll both get covered. Uh, but once again, we're gonna have the exact same effect with the X route. Although here, like I said, hopefully the cornerback doesn't catch up. Lamar doesn't quite have the arm strength that I want, but you can see that he gets the ball out there enough that you can easily, you know, these, these routes for whatever reason, even if it gets pressed, that route is a really good play and it's going to get passed for one play touchdown. So at the very least, you're gonna have to block the, uh, you know, one of your running backs, but that's pretty much it. I mean, you just need an additional blocker to pick up that guy. And then you can see how we're just, you know, bombing up over the top again, just as long as that ball gets over that corner. Like I said, I'm getting nervous every time he's throwing it, but very big play, very easy one play touchdown against any man coverage. This play can also be a one play touchdown against cover three, but it's going to be done in a very different way. So let's go and let's pick cover three. Now all I'm going to do is motion out this tight end, put him on a 10 yard out route. That's a five yard out route. Then you smart route about 10 yards. Then I'm going to put the fullback on a five yard out. And you're going to see how essentially this cornerback is going to stay down low enough 
enough that this B route's gonna come right across over the top. I don't even have my fastest receiver here. I got Sammy Watkins running this. I don't have uh, Hollywood Brown running, but you can see he gets right over the middle. Let's go and see what happened on the replay there. You can see this cornerback here, when you run this from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am, will stick to these out routes and basically come down and play them very tight. And that's what allows this receiver to get open right over the top. Go and do that one more time. Like I said, I'm running from a hash mark to the short side of the field. It would not work from the other hash mark, but you can see as long as these guys get out on their routes, uh, that the B route here can get right open through the seam between the, uh, the safety and the cornerback. Very easy play. The next play is the post halfback corner. This is a really good man beating play that I use a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus specifically on man and pick a, we'll just pick random man coverage, I guess. So all I'm really gonna do on this play is throw the running back every single time. This is a really good man beating route. It works every single time. It doesn't even matter who's in coverage, as long as you have a little bit of a speed advantage, I should say. But ultimately the Y route here, as long as you wait for him to get outside, pull it, pass it outside, he pretty much always makes the play. That was actually really good coverage there. But for the most part, it's really just an easy steal of yards. I mean, it works well against zone coverages too, because this is another play that just, you know, gets really deep. I mean, if you run against his zone coverage like I am now, just put the X route on a streak in that Y route will get open uh, because you know that zone chuck number one typically doesn't get off uh, and you can see there I don't even think I was in bounds you can motion this guy out too so man or zone that's a good option he'll get to the sideline a lot quicker and he'll get open even easier now as you can see he just has a lot of outside leverage like there that was a, a cover three um, where you know basically you'll see he gets open uh, outside very easily I mean you don't even have to put that guy on a streak to be honest with you. he's gonna get pulled out of the way uh, regardless so let's go let's just run it like this and then you'll see like I said the Y route here is just gonna be in no man's land uh, against pretty much any coverage like I said because that that zone chuck is really gonna stop um, if you watch the guy in front of B he zone chucks uh, the B route and that basically gets him out of position every single time by giving up his body so it's something I can just basically take this uh, instantly by the time he gets off the zone chuck I'm already I'm already down the field so that's it that's the video if you guys want to see more out of this formation more out of this playbook hit the like button and let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below Thank you.